Hello and welcome to INE's CCI Service Provider version 5 Learning Path. Today in this course we would talk about OSPF version 3 BFD. Now as you know BFD which is bidirectional forwarding detec uh, detection is basically used for the same case as OSPF version 2 where we would want to detect uh, link failures faster than how a normal OSPF process would do. Every routing protocol has a link detection failure mechanism built in but it's not fast enough. If you do want it to be fast enough, then you can use BFD, which can go as low as 50 milliseconds. So for achieving BFD or configuring BFD, it's pretty similar to how you would do it for IPv4. As of right now, XRV does not support uh, BFD for IPv6 in the current platform, basically in, in the virtual image. It does support on the physical equipment, but in the lab exam, you would only have virtual devices. So the only place that they could test you on as far as BFD is concerned for IPv6 would be on iOS XZ routers. Commands to activate BFD is similar to IPv4. Instead of the keyword IPv4 BFD, we would say IPv6 BFD. Again, you can configure IPv6 enabled BFD or basically globally or under the interface. Configuring BFD or for IPv6 under XRV, the command is pretty similar to IPv4 where the command would be BFD and then we say minimum interval depending on how many milliseconds you want. We define the multiplier and, uh, but you must enable BFD fast detect on XRV. As far as Cisco iOS routers are concerned, it is basically IPv6 OSPF BFD, which enables uh, BFD to inform OSPF process that a linked failure has happened. Besides that, you also define your IPv6 minimum interval and the send interval along with the multiplier. So let's try uh, configuring BFD on two routers for IPv6. So as of right now, I have two routers pre-configured they are running OSPF version 3, and um, uh, which is basically router 5 and router 6. If I do a show IPv6 route OSPF, you would see that I am learning R6's loopback. So I am running OSPF. Let me show you my configuration for IPv6. So section IPv6 router. So my router ID has been set for 5555 for R5 and 6666 for R6. Now to configure BFD, all we need to do is go back to the interface. So I could do it under the interface or I could do it globally. If you want to enable globally, you would just say BFD all interfaces. That activates BFD for all my interfaces. The timers, which is the send time and the receive time, is still done under the interface. But if you want to enable BFD just for a specific neighbor, you could do that under the interface also. So let's try doing it under the interface. So interface gig 1.56, which is the link towards R6. Here I would say IPv6 OSPF BFD. So this activates BFD and would would basically tell BFD to instruct OSPF process that if a link failure happens. And then finally we define the BFD interval, which is the same command as IPv4. So BFD interval, let's say maybe 150 milliseconds, and then receive time would be again 150, multiplier would be three. So if I do a show BFD neighbor detail detail, you would see that as of right now, your BFD status is down because I have not configured uh, router 6 and BFD sends BFD control packets to the remote router because the remote router has not been configured, he is not responding back. So as of right now, my state is down. So you do need BFD to be configured on both the routers. So let's do the same thing for IP for R6. So interface gig 1.56, IPv6, OSPF, BFD, and then BFD interval 150, 
minimum receive time would be 150 and multiplier would be 3. So the effect of this configuration basically means that I would send a BFD control packet every 150 milliseconds and I should expect a response back in 150 milliseconds. Besides that, my multiplier is set to 3, which means my link detection failure, uh, if, if, if basically a link fails, then the detection could happen as fast as 450 milliseconds. Let's do a show PFD neighbors detail. This time I should see that my state is up and I am running, my registered protocol is basically OSPF v3, Ceph comes automatically and my state is showing as up. If I go back and shut my interface down, you should see that, uh, that BFD detects that and the neighbor should go down. Let's go and shut down one of the interface. <clears throat> so maybe I can go to router five and do a debug BFD events and go back to 6 and shut down the link to 56, which is towards R5. You would see that an event got triggered and my OSPF neighborship went down immediately. This is the use case for BFD because without this, what would happen without BFD? My neighbor would not get killed. It would basically wait for the dead interval, which is 40 seconds for broadcast segment or even point to point. Now imagine if my network type was point to multipoint, the remote neighbor would wait for 120 seconds, which is my dead interval, to detect that, okay, that neighbor needs to be killed, and uh, that's when the router would reconverge to another path. So with BFD now, I'm able to detect that, that the, that the link has gone down, and it kills the neighbor immediately in less than one second, and I can reconverge now through another path. So if I do a show BFD neighbors detail, you would see that as of right now, my state is down. And the registered protocol only shows as Ceph. It does not show that uh, OSPA v3 registered at this point of time because the link is down. And the event, the BFD event would keep triggering because he's still trying to send control packets and there's no response. So it basically is able to detect that the link is still down. Going back to six, if I do a uh, no shot, the BFD should be able to detect that the link has come back up, which you can see here, my state is back up, and my OSPF neighborship should be back up. Show IPv6, OSPF neighbor, my neighbor is back up. So you see how fast my neighborship came back up and how fast it was able to detect that the link had failed and my neighbor was basically removed and router 5 could reconverge from any other path that he has. So we could use BFD with a lot of routing protocols. It's not just for OSPF. It is protocol independent, whether you use it for IPv4 or IPv6. Configuring BFD is pretty straightforward. Like I said, you could do it globally by giving the command BFD all interfaces, but the timer still has to be defined under the interface. But if you do want to activate just for a single neighbor, you could, you could enable BFD for that process, which is OSPA v3, under the interface. I hope this video was informative to you, and thank you for viewing.